All right, you guys, MMA fans all across the world, across the globe, I'm back, you know, uh, to do, you know what, I want to give my Fedor versus Antonio Bigfoot Silver predictions. I know it's kind of early, but I want to get those predictions anyway, so here we go. Um, Man, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm real anxious um, for, the return, for the return of Fedor. Um, man, you know, like, like, you know, you, you kind of got that thing that's still deep down inside of you, like, uh, you know, even though Fedor, you know, lost and everything for the first time against Redoom, you still got that thing on the inside of you, like, damn, Fedor, you know, he's still the best, you know, you know, that was a fluke what happened with Redoom, and pretty much anybody they put him up against, I just expect for Fedor to go through there and just, uh, beat the shit out of him. But uh, it's just not um, uh, it's not the way you really want to think, man. You know, trust me. You know, you cannot underestimate a guy like uh, Antonio Bigfoot Silva. You know, that being said, I I think I think Antonio Bigfoot Silva is a good fighter. Uh, I think he's made some. I think he's progressed over the years. Uh, uh, I think it's going to be a competitive fight up until the point to where he gets knocked out or submitted. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got to go with Fedor in this fight. Uh, that's what I'm picking. I'm picking Fedor really to win this fight by armbar or knockout in the first round. You know, I, I really am. You know, um, uh, a lot of people, don't they don't realize what they don't understand is, see, I put some things together here. You know, as we know, it, Werdum had a fight against Arlowski, uh while Arlowski was in his prime. Back when he was in the UFC. I'm not going to say he was in his prime prime. But, you know, he wasn't as washed up as he is now. And I'm not so sure he's even washed up. I think it's more of a mental thing going on inside of Arlowski's mind. And when he can get that mental edge back that he once had, I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with again. But that's another story. But uh, we're doing fought Arlowski, you know, a while back. And he held his own. You know, that fight could have been a draw. I'm going to tell you something. It could have easily been a draw. Or it could go either way, but they gave it to Arlowski. You know, that was a very com competitive fight. And we're doing beat Antonio Bigfoot Silva. And Antonio Bigfoot Silva beat Arlowski. So, but what I do want to say about the uh, we're doing versus Antonio Bigfoot Silva fight is that was a very competitive fight. That was what I'm trying to say. Really... If Antonio had a, had a, a gas tank and this guy was able to fight, you know, even more than three rounds, possibly even be able to fight five if he had to, if Antonio Silva, you know, was just in great shape, his, his cardio was great, he, you know, you go for, you know, just keep going, I really would have picked Antonio Bigfoot Silva to beat Werdum, you know, and... Cause like I said in the beginning of the fight, he was he, he was winning the fight. You know, it's to me when he started losing is when he started gassing, and we're doing was able to he got a decision over him. So what I'm saying is, um, anybody you know he you know we're doing is holding his own against world class fighters. Even though some people would not consider we're doing to be world class, but you're making a big mistake by counting out guys like we're doing and Bigfoot Silva. Even though I'm not very big big fans of these people, I'm not. But they are talented. They are good fighters. You can't just overlook that and think that anybody's going to go through there and walk through them. I'm pretty sure if uh, again not to get into all of that, but I have to point some things. I'm pretty sure. If Junior Del Santos was to have a rematch with Redoom, it wouldn't go exactly like it went the first time. I can I can guarantee you that. It's because, you know, um we all get caught. Look at Fedor, it happens to the best of us. You know what I'm saying? Fedor, you know, he, he made a mistake and he got caught. And uh, I'm pretty sure if Redoom was to fight uh Junior Del Santos again, he would go into that fight knowing that Del Santos was a knockout artist. He was extremely good and I guarantee you that fight would be a lot more competitive than it was the first time. So what I'm saying is you can't count guys out like Werdum or Antonio Bigfoot Silva. But I do pick this fight. You know, I I think that Fado's going to honestly come back. Come back and we're going to honestly see probably the best Fado that we have ever seen. I guarantee it. I got that feeling, man. Fado, you can look at It's almost as if he has, he has a secret. You know what I'm saying? Like... Fedor has that look on his face like he's so motivated. He can't wait to get that loss behind him. And he can't wait to go out there and prove that he's still one of the best, if not the best. He, I'm telling you, man, this fight is going to end 
in spectacular fashion. I just see Fedor going out there knocking out Antonio Bigfoot Silva or catching him in an arm in an arm bar. You know, you see how Mike Kyle, Mike Kyle's not even like a really natural heavyweight. You know, don't get me wrong, he's a big guy, but the heavyweights, whoa, you know, the heavyweights now are pretty big, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh you know, and if he was able to rock a guy like Bigfoot, just imagine what Fedor would be able to do to Bigfoot, you know, if he if he caught him like he was able to catch Brent Rodgers or Alaska and so many other people. You know, it's going to be good night to Silva. But if, if Fedor is not able to just land anything flesh, just, just with that pinpoint, I see this fight going to the ground some way. Fedor using his sambar, maybe uh, uh, Silva pulling guard. And I just see that, you know, Fedor catching him in an arm bar and just ending the fight that way, you know. But I'm picking Fedor to win this fight. But again, guys, I'm not counting out Bigfoot Silva. This guy's constantly improving. Do I think he's the best fighter in the world? Not a damn chance, but you still can't count him out. So that should be an interesting fight. Another fight I want to, I want to just give my thoughts on what I think about Alistair Overeem versus Werdum. Man, I know a lot of y'all guys are really picking Overeem to go in there and destroy Werdum. Again, just let me make myself clear on this. I don't, I don't have like a main reason, but I will say, I do not like Fabrizio Werdum. It is, I don't know, you know. It's just something about him, you know. This is the guy's is so annoying, you know. When he beats Fedor, he's like, "I like it, I like it, Fedor." You know, just and then he takes so long to fight his his injuries and all this, and I don't know, man. I don't know. That guy just annoys the hell out of me. But then again, then again, that just might be me. But I respect the guy. He's a great grappler, great uh, uh, great jujitsu uh, uh, specialist. His striking isn't even all that bad. It's not world-class striking. It's not the proper technique, but I guarantee this guy can strike if he has to. Bottom line, Fabrizio Verdum is at the top of the food chain, and you cannot count this guy out. He's a good fighter. You know, I'm, I'm telling you. So uh, if Alistair Overeem messes up, man, if he makes a mistake, although I do have to say Alistair Overeem is my favorite fighter in the world right now next to Fedor, you know, and I got a list of guys, you know, it's a couple of them, but Alistair Overeem is up there, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I You know, I'm, I'm really a big fan of Alistair Overeem, you know, of course, first there's Anderson Silva, Fedor, Overeem, then Shogun, you know, those are my top uh, four favorite fighters, but I have plenty of favorite fighters, but those guys are just right there. Um, uh, uh I just think that what's going to happen is, just to make things interesting, I don't know why, for some reason, I can't lie to you guys, man. I just see we're doing submitting overing due to knee bar or something like that or ankle lock. Anything to do with a leg submission, anything that has anything to do with a knee, ankle, heel hook, look, anything. For some reason, I, I see him going in there and tripping overing somehow. And, you know, not quite like the Brock Lesnar-Frank Mir fight, but I just see Overeem going in there trying to knock him out, you know. And um, we're doing just, I don't know, for some reason he just, he, 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 I don't know, man. I don't know. I just got this in my head that I just keep seeing Overeem getting submitted, you know, by some type of knee bar or something like that. I mean, I could be wrong, but... I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just, i like, damn, what if this happens? What if that happens? You know what I'm saying? Because I really want Overeem to win because I want to see a potential matchup between him and Fedor. Who knows if him and Fedor will ever fight? You know, if Fedor might not make it, you know, even though I hope he does and I think he is, you know, Fedor might not beat any, everybody he's uh, faced against. And Overeem, even though Overeem's been on knockout tear, he's been unstoppable and he's the best fighter in the world supposedly right now. Man, you never know what can happen. All it takes is one punch, and all it takes is submission. I don't think that we're Doom is going to submit Overeem due to armbar or triangle or anything like that. I just think that Overeem's too strong. I think he would just muscle out of it or, and just yank, you know, just yank his way out of it. But I do think, you know, he, he does have rather skinny skinny legs. You know, they're not the smallest legs, but they're pretty skinny. And if you were going to go for something, you know, it would be smarter to go for a knee bar, an ankle lock, a heel hook, you know, anything in that, in that those... Uh, Anything in that direction right there, I think that would be smart to go that way, you know. But uh, now, obviously, I, I do know that Alistair Overeem is smart. But, you know, who knows? He's been knocking guys out so easily lately. And, you know, I'm pretty sure he sees how Redoom got knocked out by, by uh, Junior Del Santos. And, you know, Overeem 
you know, he's pretty confident when he knows a guy's been knocked out before. So I'm pretty sure Overeem may go into this fight, you know, saying that, you know, if he plays it smart to say this is Overeem's fight, okay? Overeem can't lose this fight if he plays it smart. If he goes in there, he's patient. He doesn't rush into anything like Fedor did. He takes his time. And, you know, he picks his shots, even though I believe that Overeem is just, you know, he does have a capability to go in there and just destroy him with one punch. But he has to be patient, you know, because Redoom is very tricky, man. You know what I'm saying? He can pull some stuff out of his head. And uh, I think that he needs to go in there, be very patient, take his time, keep his eyes on Overeem, and don't take his eyes off for one split second. If, 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 if Redoom goes to the ground, he backs up and stand back up don't go near the ground with this guy you know what i'm saying and just keep it standing and try and every time you throw a punch have bad intentions on it you know every punch try to make it a knockout punch if you can you know what i'm saying you know uh, i'm sorry to say this but if overing catches we're doing with a knee it's good night you know it's no surviving a knee from overing his knees are vicious more vicious i mean he probably possibly have the the most vicious knees I've ever seen in all of MMA. This guy is it's like a truck or something just ramming into you. You know, the way I've seen him knee Todd Duffy in the body before he knocked him out. Absolutely sick, man. Just sick. So, um, that's my thoughts on that, man. I hope Overeem win. I hope Fedor wins. I like both of these guys. Uh, yeah, hopefully, man, nothing crazy happens. Like, we're doomed, you know. We're doing, you know, a lot of you guys might be surprised just like you were surprised when he beat Fedor. You'll be even more surprised if he beats uh, Alistair Overeem because Overeem's just so big and he's been so dominant and just almost like Mike Tyson was in boxing, you know, you know, he's got that, you know, just that, that knockout thing going on right now, just big. And he's like a monster. And I know if we're doing some miss this guy, you guys are going to be, in, you guys are going to be surprised, man. Anyway, so uh, just don't be surprised by anything, you know, anything can happen in this tournament. And uh, you might not even be able to see your favorite fighters go up against the people that you really want to see them fight. Even though I hope that's not the case. I hope, I hope this thing turns out exactly the way we, we want it and the way we're picturing it in our minds. Uh, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully Arlotsky gets past his fight with that one. i never even seen a guy fight. But, you know, I've seen a few clips, a few clips of him, a few uh, uh, of his fights. He looks like a badass, you know. He the guy looks like he got skills, but I forget his name. Can't think of it right now. But hopefully, Arlovski gets past him, and hopefully, uh, honestly, I'm rooting for Brent Rogers in 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 the in the uh, the Brent the Josh Barnett fight. I've never been a fan of Josh Barnett. I just don't like the guy. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, I don't have anything just really against him, but. He's to me. I don't like his style of fighting, and I just never really like him. You know, he's he's he plays too much. He almost has that Forrest Griffin type of mentality. Although I do like Forrest Griffin, you know, I do like him. But you know, it's almost he's always making jokes. He's never serious, and uh, he he's always failing his drugs test. His drug test, you know. But nevertheless, though, I think he should be forgiven. He served his time. He served his punishment. I think that he should be able to fight again, and they should just leave him alone until you know he fails another drug test. Uh, hopefully he doesn't. But like I said, I just don't like the guy. I'm rooting for Brett Rogers. I don't only I don't even like Brett Rogers personally. He's very arrogant. But I think he's been taught a lesson. Uh, he's been served some humble pie twice now, and uh, I think that he's going to be more uh, humble, you know, fighting these guys now. And uh, hopefully you can see him get past Josh Barnett, and we can see a rematch between Brett Rogers versus Arlovski, and hopefully Arlovski can knock his ass out, redeem himself. And uh, just get these guys back back in there again, you know, where they rightfully belong, you know, hopefully, man. So, uh, uh, big ups to this tournament, man. And, uh, yeah, man, you guys let me know what you think.